In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Maltos to assign multiple network interfaces to pods in a Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes by itself typically supports a single network interface per pod, in addition to the loopback interface. This network interface, which from now on we will refer to as the primary network interface, is provisioned by a network plugin, often referred to as a CNI plugin, because it implements a standard container network interface, also known as CNI. For some use cases, multiple interfaces are desired. It is typically the case for service providers using Kubernetes clusters to deploy container network functions. In such scenarios, one may want to use the pod's primary network interface for control traffic and assign additional network interfaces, possibly with higher throughput, to move user plane traffic between network functions. Malta supports multiple interfaces by acting as a meta-network plugin and invoking other plugins through the CNI interface to provision both the primary interface and as many secondary interfaces as needed. Secondary networks are configured through the Kubernetes APIs using custom resources called network attachments. In this video, I will use Project Entria to manage the primary network interface and I will provision secondary network interfaces for pods using the MacVLAN CNI plugin. MacVLAN is a Linux technology which allows for a single physical interface to have multiple sub-interfaces, each one with its own IP and MAC addresses. Other plugins, such as IPVLAN, can also be used to provision secondary network interfaces. I have prepared a Kubernetes cluster to demonstrate this functionality. As of now, no CNI plugin has been installed yet, and as you can see, the nodes are therefore in the not ready state. Before I start deploying Entry and Maltus, let's take a look at what a node in the cluster looks like and what our next steps are going to be. Each node in our cluster has three physical interfaces. I say physical interface, but in our case specifically, these are virtual adapters, since we're using VirtualBox virtual machines for our three nodes. The first one, ENP0S3, is used to access the internet using a NAT device. The second one, ENP0S8, belongs to our main node network. This is how nodes communicate with each other. In particular, this network is used for the Kubernetes control plane. This is how each kubelet agent talks to the Kubernetes API server. This is also the network which will be used by Entria to build a Geneva overlay network over which pods can communicate using their primary network interface. Finally, the third one, ENP0S9, is the one we are going to use as the MacVLAN parent interface. All nodes are also connected using this interface. Because we are going to use MacVLAN, this interface needs to be in promiscuous mode so that it can receive traffic destined to multiple MAC addresses. If you look at pod B in this picture, you can see it has two network interfaces. The primary one, is 0 is connected to the OVS bridge managed by Entria. For more information about Entria networking, please refer to the Entria documentation. The second pod interface, which we have called Net1 here, is a secondary interface for which we use MacVLAN. The assignment of an IP address to secondary network interfaces is out of scope of entry and Maltus. Typically, one would use DHCP. If the underlying network, in our case the network to which each node is connected through its ENP0S9 interface, already supports DHCP, then things are pretty simple. You just need to ensure that a DHCP daemon is run on every node to take care of renewing DHCP leases. Otherwise, and this is what we will show later in this video, you can deploy a DHCP server in cluster, for example as a Kubernetes deployment, and configure it so that it allocates addresses in the correct range to our secondary network interfaces. But let's move on to the demo itself. First, let's take a quick look at one of the nodes. We connect to it over SSH, and we're going to verify the presence of the three network interfaces we just described. We can see ENP0S3, uh, which connects to the internet, ENP0S8, uh, which connects to the nodes and is used for the Kubernetes control plane and is the underlay for the entry upon network, and ENP0S9, which we're going to use as the MacVLAN parent interface on each node. So pods with a secondary network interface are going to connect directly to this network and are going to receive an IP address from that slash 24 subnet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy entry in my cluster so that I have a network plugin in my cluster. 
Uh, so here I'm applying the latest version of Entria using the version of the YAML manifest, which is checked in the master branch of our GitHub repository. But for your use cases, you should feel free to uh, use one of the released versions of Entria that you can find on, on GitHub. So while Entria is deploying, we're going to look at the pods and see how long it takes them to become ready. Uh, so because the uh, Docker image has to be uh, downloaded from Docker Hub for each node, uh, it takes a little bit of time, but after 30 seconds or so, uh, all the entry uh, pods, agent and controller uh, should be running and ready. And shortly after this, uh, the core DNS pods should also uh, go to the ready state. Let's see, one more second. Here we go. And now let's quickly verify our nodes before they were in the not ready state. And now all of them are ready. The second thing I'm going to do is deploy Maltos. And the easiest way to do that is to deploy Maltos as a daemon set by using the YAML manifest that they provide on their website. This will take care of installing the necessary configuration files for Multos on every node, and the provided YAML will also create other Kubernetes resources required by Multos. So let's go ahead and follow the instructions they provide on their website. On each node, Multos is going to look for the default CI network configuration and inject itself with a higher precedence level so that it becomes a network plugin invoked by the container runtime. So the multi spots are still creating. And here we go, all the multi demon set pods are running now. Next, and now that Maltos is running, we're going to create the network attachment definition resource, which is how we configure a secondary network that pods may connect to. This is the network uh, attachment definition that we're going to use for this demo. The type here is MacVillan, uh, because we're using the MacVillan CNI plugin to create secondary network interfaces uh, for pods. The master attribute here uh, must be set to the name of the node's network interface that you want to use as the MacVillan parent interface on each node. If you remember the diagram I showed earlier, this is the third network interface I introduced, ENP0S9. We will use MacVLAN in bridge mode, uh, which supports the creation of multiple sub-interfaces on the same parent interface, each with a different MAC address, and connects all of the sub-interfaces using a simple bridge. This is what we want here. We want to have multiple pods on one node connected to our secondary network through that one MacVLAN parent interface, and we want to replicate that across multiple nodes. And finally, we configure IP address management to use, DH to use DHCP, as we discussed earlier. The name of the resource, in our case macvlan-conf, is important. When we create pods later on, we will use this name to request a secondary interface. The Maltus binary will then match the provided name to the network attachment definition and invoke the correct plugin to provision the interface. Let's go ahead and create this uh, resource. Here we go. Now that Maltus is running and we have created our network attachment definition, the next steps for us are going to be about configuring the HCP. This process may be completely different for your specific use case and depending on your underlying network. The first step for us is going to be creating a MacVLAN sub-interface on each node that we will keep in the host network namespace and we will be moving the IP address from our parent interface, ENP0S9, to the new sub-interface. This will make sure that the node itself can communicate with the pods using the secondary network. And in our case, this is required, as the DHCP server will run on one of the nodes and needs to be able to reply to DHCP queries on that network. To take care of this, we will be using a Kubernetes daemon set that will run a shell script once on every node in the cluster. The manifest is here, but I'm not going to go through it in details. The link to a complete write-up of these steps will be included at the end of the video, and the write-up will include a copy of this manifest. 
Before we create the daemon set, let's take a look at the current network configuration on one of the nodes. We have ENP0S9 here, our parent interface, and you can see that it's assigned IP address 192.168.78.101. Now let's go back and apply the YAML manifest. And look, let's look at the pods. The pods are here, and they're all running and ready. So let's go back to the to the node one more time, and let's look at uh, our interfaces again. Okay, now you can see that we still have ENP0S9, but it's no longer assigned an IP address. But if we look down here, we have a new interface called MAC0, uh, which is a sub-interface for the ENP0S9 parent MAC VLAN interface. And this new interface, MAC0, is now assigned IP address 192.168.78.101. Now that the host network can communicate with pods on the secondary network, we can think about running our DHCP server, which will be in charge of allocating IP addresses to the pod's secondary interfaces. We will use the standard DHCPD as the DHCP server, and will deploy it using a Kubernetes deployment with a single replica. Let's take a quick look at some interesting parts of the YAML manifest. First, we have a config map which stores the DHCPD configuration, which is very simple in our case. The subnet here matches the slash 24 subnet that we use for our secondary network. For the sake of the demo, we use a pretty small range of addresses here, from .200 to .250, and we know that these addresses won't overlap with the ones statically assigned to the nodes themselves. Next thing to notice is that the pod will run in host network mode which is of course required here for the DHCP server to have access to the MAC0 interface, which is the MAC VLAN sub-interface we created in the host network. Notice also that the container running DHCPD requires as an argument the name of that interface, so that it knows which interface to um, connect to. Let's go ahead and apply the manifest now. And look at the let's look at the pods. Is our DHCP server running? Yes, it's running. Okay, and for once we're actually going to look at the logs uh, for that pod. Okay, here we go. So, so far, uh, nothing interesting, uh, since we have yet to create pods with a secondary network interface, and no one has requested an IP address uh, yet, but that's going to change. All right, so as our last step before we can start creating pods, we need to run a separate DHCP daemon on each node, which will act as a proxy and will ensure that DHCP leases for local pods are renewed periodically. The DHCP daemon is actually provided along with the DHCP CNI plugin and maintained by the CNI team. All we have done here is package it as a Kubernetes daemon set so it can easily be deployed to every node. So without further ado, let's apply the manifest for the DHCP daemon. And once again, uh, we're going to look at the cube system pods. So it's a bit longer. Here we go. They're all running. Okay, so finally we're going to be able to test and ensure that everything is running correctly. To do that, we're going to apply the following manifest, which will create a Kubernetes deployment with six pod replicas. All of these pods use a very simple container image, uh, which includes a few network tools, such as ping, which are going to be useful for the testing part of this. 
and notice that all the pods are requesting a network attachment from Maltus using name magvlan-conf, which matches the name we use in our network attachment definition in step three. So let's go ahead and apply this manifest. While we wait for the pods to be running, we're gonna look at the logs from the DHCP server again. Oh, here we go. And now they're showing us something interesting. Uh, we can see the different DHCP requests from the different pods. I think if we were to wait and count them, we should see like six of them because we're starting six different pods. So now we can make sure that all the pods are running correctly. There we go, we got our six pods uh, running on the different Kubernetes worker nodes that we have. And we only see one IP address here. It's uh, the IP address of the primary network uh, interface, the one managed by Entria. Uh, kubectl is not gonna display the secondary IP addresses here for us. Uh, and of course, we can see those IP addresses from the DHCP server logs here. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna exec into those pods and we're gonna make sure that the network configuration there is correct. So let's go ahead and exec into the first pod. And let's look at the interfaces that we have. Okay, so we have two network interfaces uh, beside the loopback interface, of course. Uh, the first one is zero is the primary network interface. It's the one managed by, uh, by Entria. And the second network interface, net one, um, is the one corresponding to our uh, Maltus network attachment definition. And we can see that the IP address which was assigned to that interface, .205, is in the correct range. Uh, it falls between .200 and .250. And now if we go ahead and exec into a different pod, uh, for example, let's take the second one here uh, since it's running on the on a different node. Let's do the same thing and look at the uh, interface configurations. Okay, same thing, we have the correct interfaces and we can see that the IP address here is also in the correct range and of course it's different from uh, the one we observed from the for the first pod. Now let's go ahead and make sure that connectivity is correct by pinging the first pod from the second one on that secondary network. Okay, it works uh, as expected. And I guess what, what we can do as a last uh, check here is uh, maybe we can take uh, the IP address for the second pod here. Uh, that second pod is running on the second worker node. Let's go to the first worker node one more time and try to ping this, uh, this pod's IP address. Okay, and we can see that it's working, uh, which essentially verifies that we have connectivity between um, the nodes and uh, pods using our secondary network, uh, which is as expected. It's actually necessary for the uh, DHCP server to, to function properly. So um, if we didn't have that connectivity, we would not have been able to allocate all those IP addresses for the pods. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this was informative. Details for each step can be found in the entry at GitHub repository. The document I'm linking to here includes some additional information, in particular regarding network configuration, if you have any questions, come visit our Slack channel, send us an email, or open a support issue on GitHub. Thanks.